Whereas some of the other mouthpieces can be a little bit more, you know, if you're not playing me every day, I ain't gonna work for you, Dan. Hi there, welcome along to today's vlog. I am delighted to tell you that as of today, when you're watching this and from then on, you can now order my Sios Soprano mouthpiece. I first did a video on this three years ago. You can go back and watch it there, there's some stuff there. But since then I've been playing on this Sios mouthpiece, I've been working with Sios to refine it, to get it absolutely perfect so that we can bring it to you guys and you guys, if you're playing the Soprano, can order it. For me, obviously, in my opinion, because I've worked on it, it's the best Soprano mouthpiece out there. Why? Well, because the Soprano for me is all about that core, darker tone. Um, in Soprano, you kind of kind of get three kind of versions, I think, of Soprano players. And Branford Marsalis, who is, for me, the greatest Soprano saxophone player around, agrees with me on this. Well, actually, it was his idea, but so maybe I agree with him on this. That's actually a better way of putting it. A Coltrane Soprano sound, which is quite nasally and essentially becomes an extension of his tenor saxophone. And a number of players are like that, and they play superbly well. But their soprano is the next two to three octaves of their tenor. And that's the way they play, and who am I to criticise them, okay? The second ones are those that just play soprano for smooth jazz. I ain't gonna say any more about that, we'll just leave that there. I don't wanna open a can of worms. And the third ones are the people like Bramford and Wayne Shorter particularly, who see the soprano as a different instrument, as a different voice to be able to give you yourself a different colour to the sound, a different timbre to your, you know, to your palette as you're playing. I'm mixing my metaphors up all over the place here. But for me, Bramford Wayne, Steve Lacey are the guys on Soprano with a bit up, you know, maybe Cindy Bechet, obviously, as the starting guy. But they all have this core dark sound. Now for me on soprano mouthpieces, and you are gonna hear me play it in a minute before you skip off there. By the way, don't forget to hit a like and subscribe. For me with soprano mouthpieces, it tends to come in a complete compromise situation. You either go for incredible intonation, okay, so it's so forgiving. So I have a, a Russo uh, soprano mouthpiece that I used to use for classical work, which is thinking like a four star opening. You can play the whole thing in tune. Never an effort. Every, every note is perfectly, pe impeccably in tune. There's no altissimo register. It's so hard to be able to get an altissimo register. But you can get, more or less, the whole range in tune. But it's very closed. It sounds very stuffy. Perfect for maybe for classical playing. Certainly when I was doing the stuff with the choirs. And at St. Paul's Cathedral. Then on the other side, you've got like the absolute metal mouthpieces, which give you a sound like this. The music is almost what moves the piece around the building. It moves, it moves the piece along. So the piece begins with the music. Very much in that young Garbrecht mold, very bright, very in your face, but really, really tough to control in the intonation. Almost like any note in the second octave, could go out of tune without notice. You've got to really, really think and listen. It's really, really, it's a real taxing effort uh, to be able to play those in tune. That is where we're at in terms of soprano mouthpiece. So that's what I went to uh, Sios and said, I want something that gives me the, the cut through, that dark core sound that is noticeable, that is part of my soprano sound, that gives me not an extension of my tenor, not that nasally sound that I don't want, but that core Wayne Short of Branford Marsalis soprano sound. Help me. And that's what they've done.
That was recorded in November 2020 uh, with this setup. So it's a Yannick Asawa uh, S992, uh, Didario Select Jazz 3M Reed, and the Isaios Soprano mouthpiece. Now my mouthpiece has a semi-circular baffle with a medium chamber. It gives you that core sound that's there. Obviously you can hear it and I'm going to play it for you in a minute just on its own. Uh, and you can go back and listen to me playing it three years ago, see how my sound has developed. One of the big things I've had to do in the last three years, obviously we've all had with COVID, um, is not play as much. So this is where I think Sios mouthpieces come into their own because they're incredibly easy to play. So if you're not playing all the time, they're a bit more forgiving, whereas some of the other mouthpieces can be a little bit more, you know, if you're not playing me every day, I ain't gonna work for you, Dan. And finally, the big thing on this size mouthpiece is the intonation is pretty much flawless, as they all are, whether it's tenor, alto, or soprano. Whatever the guys at Sars do with their acoustic magic, it's amazing, because for me, the intonation is the big key thing. So there you go, that's my Sios Soprano mouthpiece. Remember, of course, with Sios, you get a 30-day free trial. So what have you got to lose? Get it ordered, links below. Thanks for watching, see you soon, bye-bye.